I wish to make the following statement in condemnation of the inflammatory fake news on Facebook. I do so in my capacity as the founder and present emeritus of the Nkata Freedom Party. Over the past few days, the IFP leadership has been working day and night in, in the community of Phoenix to stop the despicable vigilante violence that is targeting black people. We are devastated by the murders and vicious attacks and condemn what is happening in the strongest possible terms. With the situation still highly volatile and the murders continuing, it is absolutely disgusting that anyone would use social media to disseminate false information that will only escalate tensions. I and the IFP are aggrieved by the malicious Facebook post by an individual calling himse themselves Comrade Mismi Mgadi, who posted an edited video of a news interview I had dating from before violence erupted in Phoenix. Below this edited vi video, he posts images of bodies in the streets of Phoenix, clearly intending to show a nexus between the interview I made and the violence. Yet the two are entirely unrelated. Now, this malicious and manipulated post has sparked a torrent of abuse towards me, for it conveys the false news that I applauded and supported the people of Phoenix for killing the innocent black people. I've been called all manners of expletives under the sun, with commentators hoping that I will, and I would like to quote them, quote, that I will die a slow and painful death. I want to place it on record that the interview I did with the newsroom portrayed in the post is not related in any way to the violence in Phoenix. At the time when the interview took place, acts of looting had only started. Where I reside here in Ulundi, the IFS leadership led by our Secretary General, Mr. Sipo Setu Ngobo, and our Mayor in Ulundi, Mr. Wilson Changase, and our councillors, and the community of Ulundi, we are standing together in cooperation with law enforcement to restore calm. Our people were out on the streets peacefully and in full compliance with law protecting Ulundi. I myself went out during a cold night visiting all the nine stations around Lundi where our people were defending or protecting Lundi. Visiting each and every one to give them moral support and to actually to, stay, to tell them how proud I was about what they were doing to protect you know, Lundi in the, at the height of looting and destruction of infrastructure, of shops in, the, in Ulundi and in the whole of South Africa. Now, while this was happening, I received several messages from individuals in Phoenix saying that the community there in Phoenix was doing the same thing as we're doing in Ulundi to defend you know, the town from looting and, and destruction of infrastructure. I noted this in the interview I made that I had and appreciating that the community of Phoenix was acting lawfully in the face of civil unrest. That's all I was doing. There was no violence then. I got a, a posting from, uh, rather a, a message in my son's uh, cell phone direct, sent to me after that interview 
asking whether, in fact, I can in any way use my influence to get them to get more troops to come to Phoenix to protect them and to protect infrastructure. At that point, not a single act of violence had taken place. And there was no indication that the tragedy that we subsequently saw would play out. From the moment it started, we acted to quell the violence and restore peace. The IFS leadership is still actively working in Phoenix to stop further bloodshed. As a result of our, result of our action of the community in Lundi, the following pe people flocked after neighboring towns were looted from Melmoth, from even Ashawa, from Nongoma. There were hundreds, and I mean hundreds. Well, of course, I wish I could play the video here of hundreds of people queuing up, which were reminiscent of the time when we, we, we flock, we queue up for elections. Shopping, in one shop in Ulundi, which was open, after we protected Ulundi, to the extent that as time went on, I actually phoned His Excellency President Mbe, uh, I'm sorry, President Ramaphosa, our president, present president, I phoned him to say that I was worried because it looked to me that the people were too many. They were coming up to shop here because other shops were closed. And, and that, I think that security needed to be beefed up. But fortunately, other two or three stores, shops were opened. And by six o'clock, I got a phone call from the Secretary General of the, a of the IFP, who lives in Ulundi, who said to me that they have saved all of them. I've never, let me see, I will never and, and, have, and will never support or accept violence for any reason. It is absolutely defamatory to manipulate footage of my interview with Newsroom Africa in order to portray me in this way. I call on all who are grieved by this fake news to remain calm and refrain from acting in anger. I'm taking immediate legal action against the individual who posted this false, this fake news, as this is only correct course I can take. Tragically, social media has been abused before with devastating consequences. Fortunately, our courts have set precedent to ensure that defamation through social media does not go unpunished. In order to save lives, I'm also referring this fake news post to the SAPS for investigation, as it may be intended to provoke further violence in an already volatile situation. I want to thank the many friends and supporters who have identified this fake news post for what it is as a malicious attempt to destroy my legacy as a champion of peace. Now, and to all those who are now accusing me on social media of being associated with the violence of the past, I can only point out that I never went to Vietnam to learn how to conduct a people's war. I was vilified all my life, was threatened because I refused to depart from the principle of nonviolence, which my mentors in the African National Congress taught me. My uncle, Dr. Pixigai Sagasame, and other African patriots found or founded the ANC on the base of nonviolence and negotiation inspired me. Dr. Sami is not a legend to me, apart from being my uncle. He mentored me, and I'm honored to say that I'm a protege also of Nkosi Albert Lutuli, the first black person in this country to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Likewise, I was mentored by Bishop Hamilton Zulu, who was my guide from my youth to the end of his life. And the great evangelist, 
Pastor Nicholas Pegu, who also was my mentor. I remember that he always ended our fellowship discussions, which we had with him and others, with the words, quote, ours is a great God. And when I come under fire unjustly, as I am now, I gratefully say, mine is a great God. 